But when we think mainly about transitional fossils, we think about the big things. We think about fish to tetrapods and dinosaurs to birds. An example, once again, here we have of just some of the infillings or the transitions between um, avian theropod to bird evolution. Archaeopteryx, sorry the X is a little strange there, um, is a mosaic of features between its ancestor and its descendant. With the green boxes to represent reptilian type features of its ancestor and the yellow to represent the descendant features of the birds. And you can see that in most feet, in most cases, there's a, well in this case, there's a lot of mixing. And the list of ancestral and descendant features in this um, classic example of traditional fossil is incredibly lengthy. This is only a very small portion of that total. This, can we see this up here? Okay. Glenn knows this picture. This is uh, from uh, Mike Benton's recent lab work, and it is a phylogenetic tree of all the dinosaurs ever that their lab has put together. I know this is very hard to see. You can actually download it off of the internet. Um, but if we didn't have the transitional forms, we wouldn't be able to have these relationships. So a picture like this speaks a thousand words, certainly about the nature of the fossil record and what we know about transitions. Of course, there are many classic examples of transitions and in the fossil record, horse evolution, of course, being the classic one, Marsh's horse evolution. I'm not going to go into details about you know, all the physical natures of these, other than to say that as time goes on, we discover more and more fossils that are a picture of the evolutionary transitions, uh, or our early transitions are filling in what was once thought to be sort of a ladder type evolution to becoming a rich, full, basically tree or bush of fossil morphologies. And the horses are one wonderful example um, of that, probably the most classic example of transitional fossils. Whale evolution, of course, is another classic example that we have in the fossil record of evolutionary transition. And I put this particular diagram up to show you the major players from land mammals, mesonychids, down to uh, our modern whales, with the loss of, with the uh, loss of the hind limb, progressive movement of the of the of the uh, holes in the snout, all uh, those kinds of, of features. Of course, if you actually looked at whale evolution phylogenies today, you would see that there's actually probably ten times as many intermediates in these diagrams now as we are discovering kind of discovering more and more intermediate fossils. So, I started off by trying to tell you all the reasons why it would be difficult to find transitional features or, and fossils in the fossil record. And really what I, what I intended to do was to tell you that it's not actually hard at all. I mean, it's not really that hard if you think about the evolution of organisms through time and each one of them displaying transitional features. But when we think about the big transitions through life, how many traditional fossils do we actually have? What does it look like? Well, paleontologists tend not to popularize every transitional form they ever find. Okay? We do our work, we write our papers, the media picks up on a couple every once in a while um, that are great examples, classic examples of transitional forms. But we don't sit around and say, ooh, look at I got this transitional feature here in this fossil. I'm going to alert the local media so the public knows we've got this, this particular transitional form. So these slides are sort of meant to be very small text in a way to illustrate the fact that we have a lot of fossils that represent many major transitions in the history of life, but I don't expect you to be able to read them. Sort of is the point. So some of the, the classic ones, transitions from reptiles to mammals, uh, transitions from diastereptiles reptiles to birds, uh, cetaceans, condylarths, uh, manatees and dugongs, you have carnivores, 
uh, hyenids, rodents, squirrels, beavers, rats, legomorphs, transitions pretty much in almost every realm, and every realm of the history of life we pretty much have. Horses, artiodactyls, camels, like that, pickles and pigs, elephants, primates, of course even human evolution, all are replete with tons of transitional forms. So if you thought for a second that there were none, or very few, that of course is a complete misnomer. And of course one of the latest discoveries that has attracted a lot of media attention has been the uh, Canadian Go Canada fossil. <laughs> <laughs> you have to say that, right? We have the biggest trilobite on Earth and this. A? A. <laughs> like a rock. Erratic from Canada, yeah. <laughs> um, and of course, Tiktaalik um, being a transitional form from fish to tetrapods, um, showing wonderful features of fins and scales, much like fish but having shoulders detached from ver uh, neck vertebrae, so he actually, or from the skull, so he actually has a functional neck, eyes on top of his head with a flattened skull, indicating that he looked up a lot, perhaps in shallow water environments. Limb structures, uh, uh, also intermediate in form. All of these features, pretty much putting Tiktaalik exactly where paleontologists predicted a transitional form of this nature should be in the fossil record. We, knew, we know that in the Middle Devonian, fish are beginning to show structures in their fins that indicate their eventual uh, ability to uh, be weight-bearing tetrapod limbs. We know by the late Devonian time that tetrapods have been on land. This guy fits smack right in the middle, right where he's predicted he should be, which is the power of a predictive theory, power of a theory of evolution, to say, I'm going to predict what I'm going to go and get, I'm going to go and get it where I think it should be, given the age of the rocks and their ability to preserve, and there he is. Perfect form. So I know I have, don't have to convince any of you <laughs> of the fact that there are transitional fossils in the record. The whole fossil record is really just one big transition. That's what Darwin basically would have said. And the fossils and the features that they have represent all of those transitions in the history of life. So as we find more and more fossils, we fill in more and more of those gaps. Um, and I will leave it there with, with you. Thank you. down at the um, uh, North Carolina last summer, one of the uh, locals there in their paleontology group was very interested in misshapen teeth. Okay. Because anytime you find anything that looks deformed or anything, show it to me on there. He's getting photographed.